This is part two of the QGIS Lycos tutorial. I'll go over the rest of the tools that I didn't run in part one, and then we'll look at batch processing. Go up to Raster, and then to Landscape Ecology and Landscape Statistics. Go to Select Multiple Metrics tab. And last time we ran the first eight tools down to sm smallest patch area. So this time we'll start with mean patch area, median patch area, largest patch index. We're going to skip Euclidean nearest neighbor because it didn't run on my machine. And uh, the same with mean patch shape ratio. And effective mesh size and splitting index are a little bit different tools that we're also not going to run, but all the rest will run. Save your result as a CSV. And I'm just going to call mine 1977 patch stats 2. Click save. Change the land cover grid to 1977. And I'm using mangroves from Ecuador here, in case you don't remember that from part one. Click OK, and the tool will run. It will take a little while. Some of these are kind of complicated metrics. And when it's done, the window will just close. And then you can find your CSV and add it to your workspace. And then right click and open the attribute table so we can see all of the metrics that we ran. Mean and median patch areas are pretty much just what they sound like. They are the average area of the patches in one category or the median of the patches in a category. Largest patch index measures the percentage of one landscape class area that's taken up by the largest patch in that class. It's calculated as the area of the largest patch divided by the total area of that landscape category multiplied by 100. Fractal dimension index sounds complicated, but it's basically just a measure of the degree of complexity of the class, and it's applied to the whole landscape, uh, and it uses the perimeter area ratio in its calculation. Overall core area reduces the boundary of the class by one cell value and then returns the total area of that class. It's useful to control for edge effects in the habitat and uh, the calculation is based on the total patch area and the shape. So it's a little bit more informative than just patch area, especially if you're using this for something like species suitability. Like adjacencies gives the proportion of cells that border the same class of cell relative to the patch edges. So high proportions means that the patch is more dense and aggregated. Patch cohesion index measures the physical connectedness of one class of habitat. Numbers close to zero mean that the class is very fragmented and is less physically connected. Higher numbers mean the class is more clumped or is more cohesive. The last metric, landscape division, is an index that's calculated as one minus the total patch areas in one class, all of them combined, divided by the total landscape area. Numbers close to one mean that the landscape is very patchy, and zero would mean that the landscape is all one habitat type. Lycos can also be run from the processing toolbox. So if you go to, over to your processing toolbox, there should be a section for Lycos, and if you click the plus, you can see the different categories of landscape metrics you can run. If you open landscape statistics and then go to patch statistics, that's where you'll find the tools that we have run so far. From here, we'll be able to run a batch process so that we can quantify the changes over time in these landscapes. And you can see that they change quite a bit between 1977 and 2011. So open your patch statistics tool from the processing toolbox and then go to batch processing in the upper right. On the ellipsis, go to select from file system and navigate to your habitat files and add all the files. I have four. So it'll automatically load them into a line for each. We're going to use landscape class three, which is our aquaculture class, to look at the changes in the number of patches of aquaculture. 
So we're going to calculate number of patches. Select that for each line under what to calculate. And then for your output file, click the ellipsis next to the first one and type a generic file name. I'm just going to do patch num, patch number, and click save. And then under autofill settings, you can say fill with parameter values. And then use the landscape grid and that will add the name of the landscape file to the end of your generic name. So you don't have to name them each individually and then click run. It'll take a little bit and then click OK when it's finished. Click close and then close the toolbox and there's all your output files but they really aren't that helpful because they don't have the name attached to them and it's unclear which one goes with which habitat file. So we'll just select all of those and right click and remove them. And then we'll add to the workspace the four CSVs that were generated by the tool. Now if you open 1977, right click and open attribute table. Number of patches is five as you may recall from the first time we ran the tool. And if you open up 1990, you'll see the number of patches is 71. So it went up quite a lot between 1977 and 1990. If you open up 2004, the number of patches is down to 34. And that's kind of interesting. So it went up to 71 in 1990 and then down again in 2004. So we'll just add those raster files to take a look at what's going on there. So that's what the habitat looked like in 1990, and that's what it looks like in 2004. So in 1990, it looks like there are more patches and they're more fragmented. Um, and there are more smaller patches. But in 2004, the patches are larger and more connected. It looks like some of the area that was estuary, the white, or class 7, was filled in by aquaculture making the patches more connected. So that's how you might use LECOS to look at changes over time in landscape variation.